Hi there, welcome to another edition of the Global Economic Outlook. My name is Philip, and as usual, I'll take you through one major event uh, in the global economy. Today, we'll be looking at uh, the recently passed um, Petroleum Industry Bill in Nigeria. Um, that's been the subject of debate for many years, uh, and um, in the early uh, weeks of July, uh, I think the first day of July, the bill was passed at the legislative chamber. Uh, to come into effect, it will still require the uh, ratification by the president of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari. Uh, but in fact, it has been at the legislative chamber for about 13 years. Uh, uh, so this is a major progress, especially uh, when you consider that um, it's a bill that is supposed to address some uh, serious issues in the oil industry. Uh, for Nigeria, oil has been the mainstay uh, of the economy. Uh, it can, accounts for about 90% of all total uh, foreign exchange earnings, uh, which is quite, quite critical, especially when you know that um, Nigeria also imports a lot of items, um, which makes um, the use of foreign exchange really critical to the economy. Um, so the main objective of the PIB is to promote transparency in the oil industry, promote accountability, improve the corporate governance in the oil industry, and you know also make the environment conducive for investors, uh, especially the foreign investors. Uh, you know the oil industry in Nigeria has been known to be you know to be corrupt, uh, but the PIB you know is looking to address some of the loopholes in the system. Uh, one of the other things that the PIB will try to address is to create a national petroleum company that has a commercial focus that is seeking to make profit. Uh, if you look at that, there's a report uh, by the PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, which looks at the top 20 changes in the petroleum industry bill. Uh, you know, it states clearly that it will lead to the repeal of about 10 laws. Uh, including the Hydrocarbon Oil Refineries Act. It will lead to the repeal of the Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency Act, uh, Petroleum Equalization Act, uh, even the Nigerian National Petroleum Act um, is going to uh, be repealed as, as soon as um, the uh, company begins uh, ceases to exist, which is one of the things uh, the PIB is proposing. Um, so the repeal of the NMPC Act in particular will interest Nigerians uh, because, you know, many have been worried about the lack of transparency in the system uh, and it's been a source of concern um, for many. Uh, but the PIB would be creating a company called NMPC Limited, uh, which is supposed to be different from NMPC. Uh, it, will be, uh, it will be incorporated under the company uh, an Allied Matters Act, um, but the name change is probably <laughs> maybe there is nothing, there is not much to see there. Uh, but probably there will be some differences in the structure uh, of the new company, especially as the new PIB hopes that NMP will be able to sell uh, some of the shares to Nigerians uh, in future, uh, just as is the case with Saudi Aramco, uh, the Saudi Arabia state owned um, company. Uh, so there is still some bit of optimism, uh, especially if the PIB is allowed to work uh, as it should. Uh, but there are other things to also note. Um, the PIB, uh, we also see a marginal increase in the equity share of host communities to 3% from 2.5%. The host communities certainly are not happy with that uh, because they want a 10% share. Uh, of course, they think that it's their land which gets affected. You know, they can't farm as they should. There's environmental degradation, part of the pollution uh, that is caused by um, the production of oil uh, in their vicinity. So they feel that uh, 3% is just too low, uh, but it's what has been approved uh, by the uh, legislative chamber. Uh, another thing that is important to note is that the PIB has included a new provision that will see only companies who own a refining license import petroleum products into Nigeria. Um, the likes of Dangote have initially uh, requested for that to be the case uh, just to reduce the number of people uh, who import petroleum products into Nigeria. And that's concerning 
uh, because as a refining company uh, or a refinery, you expect that they should be more focused uh, on producing or refining oil as it is. Uh, so I don't know why they are so interested in also being the sole importers of uh, petroleum products. Is that something to be concerned about? Is this something uh, going? Is there something going on that you know? we should be worried about uh, because what will happen to other players in the downstream sector, for instance, and why would we keep it to probably just about six players because only about six companies hold the refinery license? You know what the implication of that is? It's easy to uh, turn that into an oligopolistic um, market, even though right now they still operate more or less you know, by colluding and determining prices. But at least with more players in the industry, uh, it becomes difficult to, of course, uh, regulate prices to where you want. So I don't know why they are fighting for uh, import license uh, to be the only sold importers when, of course, they are already refining or they are supposed to be refining oil. So that's a bit of concern. Uh, but we'll see how things play out, uh, especially as, as regards to this. Uh, the PIB actually addresses several other issues uh, and we hope to discuss them as they become, you know, subject matters they become as uh, they come up for debate uh, even in our uh, future editions of the global economic outlook so that's it today uh, for the global economic outlook uh, we we'll also like to invite you for the third live edition of the global economic outlook which you host which you hold online uh, the topic uh, is a uh, transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy um, and it will hold on the 31st of July by 12 p.m. Nigerian time. Uh, we have, um, you know, prominent uh, energy experts uh, who will be speaking about it. You can see it all on the flyer. Um, and we hope to have you there. Um, so that's it on the Global Economic Outlook for today. I'll uh, see you next time.